Hi guys and welcome back to Is It Worth It Reviews. Today we have something affordable for everybody and it's an SMSL M300 SE. And uh, this is a DAC, but it also has a headphone amp. It costs only 129. M300 SE follows the same look and styling that this M series uh, DACs and head amps have been uh, using for some time now. One of them was uh, my long time favorite M500 MK2 that was a fantastic DAC and a decent headphone amp. However, this one is noticeably more affordable at 129 as I said. And uh, if we look at the back, we can see that it has balanced outputs uh, in form of XLR. There is a single-ended output, but 3.5 mm stereo jack, not a pair of RCAs, which is more common. And uh, that's done because this is a small back panel and something had to give. They decided to do it this way. I don't know, maybe somebody would prefer uh, RCAs and uh, TRS balanced outputs. Maybe they could fit all of these. But, you know, SMSL decided for this and it is what it is. Many uh, small uh, compact DACs use 3.5 millimeters output, so it's not really all that new or shocking. Uh, as for the digital inputs, we have coaxial, optical, Bluetooth, and USB, which is in form of USB-C input. And uh, another USB-C on top is for the auxiliary power. And in my opinion, this is not uh, well marked because on the bottom here you can see sign power for the upper one auxiliary power well the bottom one is actually for both usb signal audio signal and power if you use this one only as a deck because in that case the power supplied by the signal usb cable is plenty for the DAC to function. But if you are maybe using one of the optical or Bluetooth or coaxial inputs, they do not provide power themselves. So in that case, you need to power the DAC separately. Also, there is one thing that I do not like particularly, and that's that in the uh, manual, SMSL says that if you are using a headphone output, which is in the front, you can see 6.35 millimeters out and 4.4 millimeters one. So if you're using the headphone output, they say powering the device only through the USB signal cable is not enough. Uh, you will not get enough power on the headphone output. So in that case, you have to use the auxiliary power supply, even if you are using USB as a signal input. But of course, I tried using headphone output without providing auxiliary power supply because, you know, I'm testing the device. And in that case, I have to say everything worked, but the sound fidelity was not as good. Especially in the bass region, everything was uh, chewy, you know, just like a chewing gum. You cannot, it could not get good form and good control. And I believe that was the showcase of headphone uh, amplifier not having enough power. It was probably working at a much lower power and control, especially in the bass region, would, was just not there. It was not sounding good. But once you add that external auxiliary power supply, everything went back to normal. Aside from that, there is really not much to talk about this device. It's based on a quite entry-level Cyrus Logic DAC chip. I'll put it on the screen, but that doesn't have to mean basically anything when it comes to sound fidelity. DAC chip influence is overrated. Uh, the, the device as a whole is what provides the, the final sound fidelity and sound quality. Then the headphone amplifier is not particularly powerful. It's on the lower side, numbers are not impressive at all. Once again, I'll put that on the screen. But oddly enough, when I was listening to it with my big uh, headphones, I did not have that feeling that it lacks power. 
unless I deliberately didn't use uh, auxiliary power supply. If I followed the instructions, it sounded quite good, the gain was good and the control was decent. I was actually surprised later on when I saw how low numbers are on paper. What else? Uh, the front of the unit, it's fairly standard. We have two buttons, then volume knob, which is also a button, and one small OLED display. It's a monochromatic, it shows the basic info and it's functional, that's it. But how does it sound? At first I started using M300SC as both a DAC and a headphone amp, so I connected my headphones and I started listening to it. And the sound is uh, quite revealing. There's plenty of details, especially in the mid-range, and uh, you can call this sound sharp and focused. And it's a little bit of upper mid-range forward, but not too much. So if you are sensitive to that region, if you don't like a little bit of sharpness or edginess in the upper mid-range, you might dislike it. But for most of us, I think it's not a problem. Most listeners would simply call that clear and forward sounding in the mid-range. And then the bass line is quite tidy and well controlled. But if you're looking for warmth specifically, you will not find much of that here. And I quickly went to compare it to SMSL C200, which is a very decent back in the headphone amplifier at 200 US dollars. And I found that C200 sounds much uh, warmer in the bass, mid bass, also mid range. It simply sounds fuller and also tonally a little bit richer. Now, in terms of sheer detail retrieval, the difference is not big at all if there is any difference. I don't really think there is. There, there isn't much of a difference if you are just looking what's happening in the recording and hunting for small details, crackles, tone textures in the recording, you'll hear that equally well on M300SC as you will on C200. But with C200 the soundstage will be a little bit wider and more relaxed and uh, tones will be fuller bodied. And uh, I prefer that. Also C200 has noticeably more powerful head amp. So if you decide to crank a volume a little bit, if you have a pretty demanding headphones, it will be better. But it does cost 219 US dollars, which is noticeably more than M300SE. So that would be it. Slightly leaner and narrower in terms of sound staging, sound on M300SE, slightly wider, bigger and tonally richer, on C200. Uh, maybe not so slightly actually. I overuse this adjective slightly, but um, it's noticeable. If you are a attentive listener, it's noticeable the difference. Then one device that I do not have with me anymore would be topping the X3 Pro Plus. And uh, that one is probably slightly more revealing and slightly more dynamic sounding than M300SE. But to my ears, M300SE does have a better, more neutral tonality. It is a little bit leaner and upper mid-range forward sounding device, but DX3 Pro Plus was very lean and sharp and analytical sounding device with punchy bass line, extended highs, but lean and sharp in the mid-range. And M300SE is not that lean, sharp and analytical. So even though some of you would probably prefer the X3 Pro Plus because it's more technical, at least it appears to be that with its sharpness, I believe that this one, M300SE, has tonality that's truer to life. 
and uh, that small sacrifice in punchiness, dynamics and just sharpness is worth, in my opinion, for getting this more neutral tonality and sound signature overall. Next, I used it in my room setup as a deck only with its uh, line output on the back. And in that case, the overall impression is exactly the same as it was for the headphone output. Meaning that you have really clean, really uh, highly resolving sound, plenty of details, especially in the mid-range, uh, the, the, that upper mid-range has a little bit forward character to it and uh, the bass line is of a good depth, it has decent kick and it's well controlled, but the same as with the headphone output, there is not much warmth. If you would like to have some sort of bloom a little bit, euphonic sound, you will not find that here. This one is a modern, focused, precise, clean, mid-range forward sounding deck. And I quickly compared it with two different decks. First one was once again SMSL C200, which is pricier. Once again, you could notice that C200 is warmer sounding. And that's, uh, at least to my ears, a little bit nicer. But uh, I could notice that C200 is slightly muddying fine details, some fine details and some tone textures that M300 SE uh, doesn't. And in this case, when we do not have headphone amplifiers in the path of the signal and this powerful and obviously better head amp in C200 does not play the part. And also this inferior head amp in M300 SC does not play the part. In that case, I actually thought that as a deck only, these two are the same tier, they are the same level. And I even slightly preferred this revealing tidy, controlled nature of the M300 SC. Yes, it does sound slightly narrower and slightly leaner, and C200 is a bit wider and warmer, but it's also muddier. So it doesn't uh, offer that on top of the performance of M300 SC, but there's a little bit of give and take situation. And if you plan to use uh, your device mostly as a deck and maybe just sometimes as a headphone amp, then M300 SE is probably a better deal. If you plan to use it mostly as a headphone amp and just sometimes as a deck, then I would go for C200 because it's a better head amp. And lastly, I used SMSL SU1 that doesn't look like much next to these two, but it's a mighty good deck for 79 US dollars. The, the sheer value, uh, the, the price to performance ratio of this one is just insane. And uh, when I compare them directly, SU1 once again showed that it's an exceptional little deck. It could uh, reveal all of the small detailing and textures that M300 SC could, but it does that with a bit more fullness, a bit better bass grunt, and uh, there's just a bit more warmth in the mid-range, making everything just a touch fuller sounding, palpable sounding, and uh, to my ears, a little bit more pleasant to listen to the music. The M300 SC is not far behind. As I said, detail retrieval is basically the same, general liveliness of the sound is basically the same, but it does sound uh, leaner and touch more narrow when it comes to the sound staging. The difference is not big, but given that SU1 is uh, more affordable and it is a bit better sounding, if you only need a deck, go for it. It's a fantastic little budget deck. 
But if you do want to have a DAC and a headphone amp in one, and you don't want to dig deep into your pockets, this one might be a good solution. So in conclusion, uh, this M300 SC doesn't bring anything new or unseen to the market. Its DAC is decent, but it's not the best in the class. If you only need a DAC, go for SU1 or Topping E32. There are better DACs. Its headphone amp is once again quite decent, but it's not the best in the class. A C200 has a better headphone amp, but it's also more expensive. But at 130, it's really uh, difficult to complain much about anything. It has quite decent uh, connectivity, it has quite decent sound fidelity on all its outputs, and it's just a decent budget device. That would be all for today, guys. Uh, hope you like this video. See you next time. Bye.